When I pray, I pray everywhere. I mean, and I think that that's what was the, what got me. It was like you didn't have to go to a building to pray. It's everywhere, walking down the street. I, I smudge, I smudge um, to get grounded, to stay connected. The spirit lives everywhere. You know, they live in the city, we're here. We can't be denied that because we live in the city. When I started praying more, it was all, it was all about just giving thanks. So somebody gave me some sweet grass and, and I used to just stick it on the stove, right? Like uh, the old electric stove and turn it on and burn it and just, you know, brush it over me because I didn't know really what else to do. I'll smudge wherever. I'll smudge in a vehicle. I'll smudge on the street. I'll smudge in the park. Wherever you can get a place of privacy and a place of some quiet to be able to, to just be, really, with yourself and in the presence of the Creator. You know, we come to the city and we're not visible. We get really lonely when you, you come into a city of two and a half million people and you haven't seen a native person in two hours. You wonder, where are they? You know, I, you get lonely. I grew up Catholic and never felt like I belonged there. I never felt safe. I, I always felt like I was doomed because I'm also gay. So I was going to hell in a handbasket, really. And so when I went to my first sweat lodge ceremony, that's where I felt, I just like, this is home, it's tangible, something tangible to believe in. It was the earth, it was the moon, it was, it was the rocks, it was, I could, I could feel it, I could smell it. And I felt like I fit, it was, it was home. Drumming is a form of praying, and so you want to approach it with a with a, a, a clear heart and a and a good mind. So I learned about smudging before I drum, to to kind of purify ourselves. I've been in academia now about six years and I've smudged in my office a couple of times and usually there's not very many people around so it's all right. But you're, I'm always aware that when I smudge in my office, it can be interrupted. Um, someone can come along and challenge you uh, under the fire code, uh, you know, that kind of thing. It's, the institution isn't made with smudging in mind. I find it's easier to be able to smudge in a place if, if you have a relationship with the people in the space. Because if you don't, or they have a lack of awareness or a lack of understanding of what smudging is, or like, well, what does it entail? And well, you know, you try and explain what it is, and they think that there's gonna be a fire or something, and oh, you know, they gotta worry about their insurance and stuff, and it's like, no, it's, you know, they, so sometimes it's just people's misunderstanding or their lack of knowledge um, that can be a problem problems around smudging in theater spaces. Well, the other night, we were going to smudge and we asked for permission and the artistic director wasn't there at that time and the other person was afraid to let us smudge in a room because there was carpet on the floor. 
and he didn't understand. We tried to explain to him what it was, simply. And he took us downstairs, and there was like painting that had been going on. It like reeks of tarnish. There was liquor bottles everywhere. Yeah, but so we we prefer choice. the uh, we, we'd the like chemicals. to smudge though, and we can't. Uh, okay. Get upstairs the smell anymore. is uh, of me painting. Uh, my yeah. Face. How is the urban Indian to survive? <laughs> So you don't, you don't, it's, is it because of the smell? And yeah, I just don't feel, yeah, it's, I don't want to, it's not the space I want to be in it for as much. We chose to go outside. So it's times like that where people just don't understand and they're just, uh, or it's, I don't know if he wanted to tuck us away. I don't know if that, I, I doesn't feel like that was what the intention was. It was more of, I don't know, and it's going to get really smoky and there's fire and, so I just want to thank all our ancestors for that humor they passed on to us. Uh, I want to be also be thankful for uh, being alive today. <laughs> Thanks for my, <laughs> my sweet grass. It's not burning for me today. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being down by the lake shore, and that time I, uh, it was the anniversary of my mother's death, and I wanted to sing a song. I feasted her, wanted to sing a song. People were walking by, and I remember them looking at me, and, and I was thinking, if I'm out here more than five minutes, they'll probably call the police on me. And that was where visibility also mattered, because I don't look that native. I thought, if I looked really native and I was out here singing, they'd be, they'd be calling the police on me for sure. But it's, it's always strange to try and do that in the middle of a, a, a white society that, that has no knowledge or, or interest or respect for any of that. I talked to one of the elders who's gone on to the spirit world, and we'd say, oh, is it OK to put our tobacco out on the cement sidewalks? And he goes, what do you think is underneath the cement? I went, all right, Mother Earth, of course. You know, what do you think is underneath this building? And then we started speaking, what do you think this building is made out of? You know, everything stems from Mother Earth, and no matter what we look at. The moon is full, I think, of what people are doing in the city. I mean, it is full wherever we're going to be. We live in downtown Toronto, so if you live on the 29th floor, you're not going out to the ground. You're going out to the balcony <laughs> or maybe just an open window, right? So you offer that tobacco. You offer that prayer. You recognize it is the full moon. So I want to welcome you to the full moon ceremony. Ceremonies are being held all across the country at this time, and we're all looking at the same moon. The first time we did it, we actually thought the CN Tower was the moon, so it took us a while to realize <laughs> that it could come up over there. But, you know, now we got it down pat after all of these years, you know. So if you're looking that way, that's the CN Tower. <laughs> and then that moon is at her fullest. It represents a time of courage. And when she's at her fullest, it's about life-giving force. It's where she has that highest of energy. So we come together to be with her, not to pray to her, not to worship her, but we are all part of creation. So we come together to honor ourselves as women and to honor our families and honor our grandmother, the moon. Remember about the moon and what it represents and how you are that moon as you walk on this earth. You can address the sacred fire in the way that you feel most comfortable either in your own language or that higher power. The tobacco ties that we made earlier, if there's only one that you made and the teaching is, is that one that you made? is for you, because there's none of us who doesn't need help or to give thanks.
Native spirituality is not an organized religion. It's about individual practices. And it's also about group practices, but individually you pray wherever you are. You know, you can pray at the corner of Young and Dundas if you like. It's not a restricted place. It's a open, openness. It's everywhere.